Hey guys, well it's time for me to get back and work on the plane some more. Uh, just a quick update, it is uh, November the 1st today, right now as I record this, and my wings are on their way, as I told you before, I'm getting the slow build wing kit, they're on their way and should be here December the 22nd, so it'll be a little bit of an early Christmas for me then, I'll be out here uh, working on my wings, despite what my family might want. Um, <laughs> And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, at this point, I'm getting a little low on things to do. I'm still working on the fiberglass bits, as you saw in the previous video. And I, I plan to keep working on some of that because not all of it's perfect and i got ample time, right? Uh, I thought I would show you a piece that I've been working on, and I showed it to you last time. Specifically, I'm talking about this end cap where I had worked on this fiberglass piece. This is actually the second one I worked on. The first one is over on the, on the uh, airplane right now, and I'll show it to you. This is the second one. I still have a lot of trimming to do. I've got to go around and cut all this off. But I've gone in, and I added all the stuff the, the, on the inside here to firm this up, and that is a stout piece of fiberglass. So uh, I'm very happy with how it came out. I don't know how well you can see this. It's, it needs just a little bit of buffing, uh, a little bit of sanding, and there is a little bubble right over here that I can sand down. But other than that, this is this is fantastic. I am supremely happy with that. Uh, I'm going to cut this right quick and go fit it on the plane to make sure it still fits on the plane correctly. And, uh, yeah, this is good. Here's the other piece that's still on the plane. I'm going to take it off here in a second. But you can see where this piece I had glued together, and I put another piece of fiberglass over this. And it's really solid, too, although you kind of can't tell. Uh, but I'm happy, very happy with this as well. Again, it just needs a little bit of buffing, right, right along in here especially. I think once I sand that out and, you know, cut this and trim it all along the inside, I think we're going to be good. I do still need to do the inside work on this piece, so uh, hopefully I'll get that done tonight. And now that I have my mission, I get started. Um still really impressed with the fiberglass. It came out really nicely. Uh, you know, I was really concerned about the whole fiberglass work. I'd never done any work on fiberglass before. And honestly, it's it's one of the reasons I went with an all-metal aircraft as opposed to like a Velocity or, or uh, one of the more standard kit, fiberglass kit planes. It's just because I was really scared of fiberglass. Um, but yeah, not too bad. Right there, I just showed you some of those ribs a little bit just to let you look at them and say, these are the ribs I'm using, you know, just uh, foam and and uh, cardboard wrapped in tinfoil. That worked really well. And here I am now working on cutting the excess fiberglass off of the, uh, the, the piece. And uh, I was surprised. I was still concerned as to how it was going to come out. But it did come out really nicely, which I'll show you towards the end. Here I'm going through and I'm test fitting that piece back on the airplane, like I said, to make sure it actually still fit and that it, for whatever reason it didn't uh, stretch it or whatever. And I found that a, a single glob of the resin uh, clogged up one of the holes, so I had to go back over and drill it out right quick to get it back on there so that I could actually fit it. But yeah, it fit on the plane nicely and, and uh, I was supremely happy. So I, I was checking the fitting here to make sure there was no rubbing and there's no rubbing at all. See me, I gave a thumbs up there. And uh, here you're going to see me go over to my bag and pull out my iPad to continue to log hours because I'm still really anal about my hour logging. So I'm starting to question it because it does take a lot of time. And then I begin the process of shaping the, uh, the edges there where I cut the fiberglass off and, and making it look like one unified piece. You know, the goal is by the end to paint this thing and have you not know that these were two separate pieces. Um, and this is me using the... Uh, Sanding wheel very, ever so slightly, just being gentle. Once I get done working on that, it's a, a lot of hand sanding. And so that's what you're seeing me do here is I, I have the teeny little fine grit sandpaper and I'm just rubbing on, on that piece trying to get it uniform and probably spending a heck of a lot of time and care on it. Uh, I thought about this at one point. It's like, man, I am, I'm putting a lot of effort into this piece on the plane that no one will ever see. But uh, you know what? I guess that's the perfectionist in me. I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. Uh, that's just how it is. Uh, this has been a fun project, and I'll talk more about that later. But, yep, Sanda Sanda. You're going to do a lot of that, apparently. Okay, so uh, here is one of the end pieces uh 
ready to be painted and primed, I think. Not perfect, um, but you can see that it's, it's nice and smooth. Now that, that gap of hanging uh, cloth that was hanging off like, looking like this, you know, now is smooth and hard. Uh, that's pretty awesome. I'm not unhappy. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like once it's all painted. But I think since it's kind of an end cap and it's kind of in a, a place where you won't really see it, this uh, this is perfect. This is just fine. I'm gonna put it on the uh, put it on the plane and actually look and see what it looks like on the plane itself. But uh, yeah, this is great. This this will work. Down at one end, uh, I had a little bit of fabric separation or something. And so there's a little bit of a gap uh, here. But, I mean, they're just as stiff as can be. And I put a little bit of glue in there, too. I might, since I'm going to have to mix some up here shortly to do the inside of this one, I may just squirt a little bit in here just to fill that gap. But other than that, fiberglass is actually not that hard to work with, I guess. So, there you go. And then it's just a matter of putting it back on the plane one more time and... Uh moving the elevators up and down to make sure that we don't have any rubbing or anything like that. It's free travel, and sure enough, it's all good to go. So, uh, awesome. Once that's done, it's time to work on the other piece. Uh, here's where I'm beginning the process of putting the fiberglass filler on the inside of the other fairing wingtip. Uh, that involves a lot of you know, mixing up of the very uh, the fiberglass resin and then getting strips and pieces put in there and, and uh, getting it all set up and ready to glue. That's what I'm doing here. And so here, uh, this is page 94 of 96 for the empennage. Um, I'm beginning the process of adding the uh, that uh, fiberglass tip to the vertical stabilizer assembly and I talk about that here in a bit but I just I needed to get it a, you know get it all smooth and ready to go and I had worked on this previously quite a bit uh, to make it actually fit because the the design the way that that fiberglass is designed it didn't just fit in there normally you actually have to to uh, give it a little bit of cutting and shaping to get it to fit in there correctly, uh, in including cutting the nose off of the part that goes below the metal. Uh, and once you do that, it'll fit much more nicely, as well as cutting like a centimeter off the bottom of, of the, uh, the fairing itself that goes on the inside of there. So, But eventually I did. Uh, the downside is that the fiberglass back does not actually meet up with the metal back, which uh, you would think it would, but it doesn't. Uh, but everything else fits perfectly. So it'll be interesting to put the, the back piece on, and, and I actually talk to that here shortly uh, and explain exactly what I'm talking about. So just like the fairing tips on the horizontal stabilizers, I have to create the same piece on the vertical stabilizer up here. Uh, a slight difference, though, is the, this, uh, the edge doesn't meet up with the edge of the metal. So... That'll be interesting. I'm not sure how that's supposed to happen, but I'll do the best I can. Um, the other issue is in, on the front, which if I reposition this a little bit, maybe you'll be able to see. I'm not sure. But the other issue is right here on the front, the way this piece was originally molded, obviously there's supposed to be this line that goes straight up you know, from, from here up into the ferry. And I think I've done a good job making that work. Uh, <clears throat> below this, the, 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 the piece that's down here that you can't see actually kind of extended outward a little bit. So I had to do a lot of, a lot of cutting and sanding on that to get it to fit in here correctly. Uh, and there's some shaving that still needs to happen. There's a lip. As I run my finger up the side here, when I get to the, the fiberglass, there's... There's a lip right there, and it's it's pretty pronounced. So and it's on both sides. It's not here. Like, it's perfectly smooth there, perfectly smooth there, but right here is like, dunk. You know, and so I'm going to have to get out the old sandpaper and get after that. That's going to take a lot of effort. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next uh, is work on 
this piece of fiberglass. I've got, I've got this mounted to this stool right now, so hopefully it won't fall over. Uh, I'm not going to have that open, so it's not like I have to worry about any breeze or anything like that. I normally would not let it sit up like this, but for now it should be okay. Fun. So I've had a lot of people ask me questions uh, about this process. And specifically, uh, one of, well, questions and suggestions. And specifically, one of the, the suggestions is no more music. Okay, I've heard you loud and clear, guys. I won't be putting music in my videos anymore. It'll just be me talking. I also was pacing while doing this Q&A session, and I promised to never do that again. I really didn't anticipate how badly the camera motion would be really distracting. So sorry about that. I won't do that again. Uh, interestingly, and I, I want you guys to, to post in the comments below if you would, to me... Uh, some of the early episodes, episodes, what, what do I call these, videos? Some of the early videos, the, uh, the music was too loud, for sure. But the most recent ones where I still had music in them, it was barely audible at all to me. Uh, now, part of that is partly because <laughs> I'm deaf, but it's also because uh, I had, the, I mean, I had the, the, the dials cranked way down low. So I thought it was interesting that, that some of you guys still really uh, found the music offensive. I, I, that's probably the wrong word, but just distracting maybe, or you just didn't like the style, I don't know. That's fine. But anyways, I've heard yet, I won't be running music anymore. Sorry about that. Uh, the other request that I've had a number of times is for Q&A. You know, you guys uh, want to be able to ask questions and have me answer them, and I am all for that. I have no problem with answering any question. Uh, just know, though, I'm not a professional builder. You know, I'm doing this for fun. Uh, I'm sharing my experience with you, not only because I just like sharing my experience, but because, you know, I'm hoping that I'll learn something and maybe you'll learn something too. Uh, and if you do, then great. If you don't, then, well, sorry, I'm a terrible teacher. Uh, well, so, question and answers. The very first question that I received recently about this, and by the way, feel free to ask questions below and I'll include them in the, in the you know, future videos. Uh, or email me, whatever. The very first question that I got was, um, what's the worst part about this, about this process, about building the plane? And I think the individual who was asking the question was fishing for me to say something along the line of, oh, the rivets are the worst part, or, or oh, the fiberglass is the worst part, or something like that. Um, that's not the worst part. Uh, for me, I'm, uh, if, you're, if you like building things, if you're a hands-on kind of person, you like to, to uh, get in there and build stuff, then that's actually the best part. That's a lot of fun. The worst part is the weight. <clears throat> it takes years to build this. I'm learning to fly at the same time, so I go up in my flight instructor's Cessna 172 every once in a while, and and putter around in the sky for fun, but I want to fly this plane now. You know, I want to fly this plane. So that's the worst part, is, is the fact that it's just, it's just going to take years to do this. Uh, everything else is fun. Uh, this, this project started out as a way for me to get off the computer um, and do something in my spare time that was productive and interesting, and boy, I have, I have achieved that. But that's not the worst part. That's the best part. The, the, building this plane is an amazing process. And uh, I have to give props to Vans again. They've put together an amazing kit. The instructions are very clear. So far, I think I've made or see, I've found one or two mistakes in, in the plan itself. I think just one that comes to mind immediately. And it was obvious, the mistake. You know what I mean? They, they had transposed some numbers. Mistakes that I've made... I've made a couple, but usually they're really easily or easy to rectify or fix. Uh, I've had the, the really nice thing is I have access to all these people in my local EAA chapter who have built this plane bunches of times or, or other Vans aircraft, and so it's really pretty easy to say, "Hey guys, am I on the right track?" And so far, the answer has been yes. So, anyways, uh, thank you, Vans. You've you've got an amazing product, and I'm I'm really happy, and uh, this is fun. So. Yeah, worst part, the wait. It's going to be years before this gets done. 
that's okay. I think the first time I go up in the air, or even the first time I start the engine, are you kidding? I'm probably going to be on cloud nine. We'll see. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Like I said, ask anything. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you I don't know. Uh, maybe we can discover it together, experiment, figure it out. Also, if you're looking to build one of these things, start sooner rather than later. Remember, you don't have to buy the whole plane all at once, right? The empennage kit is actually fairly inexpensive at three, I don't remember the exact number, 3,500, right? Roughly $4,000. Plus you'll need about $1,000 worth of tools. You can get you can get more. You can spend upwards of three or $4,000 worth of tools like I did, uh, but you don't have to. So again, I would say start sooner than later because it does take such a long time. So if you're thinking about doing this, don't, don't let yourself uh, make the mistake of finding excuses to not do it. Finding, uh, oh, I don't have enough room, right? Yes, you do. You can start building in your living room. Uh, I don't have the money. Well, okay, that's fair, but take 100 bucks a month or 100 bucks a week or whatever and put it in a savings account until you do have the money. You will eventually get it. There's just there's no good reason to not do this if it's something that you're interested in. Anyway, guys, that's it for this time, and uh, thanks for watching.